Good evening everyone and welcome to the East Midlands Synod Prayers for this the 4th of June. Our opening praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Hear our voice, O Lord, according to your, your faithful love. According to your judgment, give us life. Blessed to you, Lord God of our salvation, to you be glory and praise for ever. In the darkness of our sin, you have shone in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Open our eyes to acknowledge your presence that freed us from the misery of sin and shame, that freed from that misery and shame, we may grow into your likeness from glory to glory. Blessed be God, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. That this evening may be holy, good and peaceful. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As our evening prayer rises before you, O God, so may your mercy come down upon us to cleanse our hearts, set us free to sing your praise now and forever. Amen. Our Psalm Tuesday is Psalm 121. I will lift up my eyes to the hills. From where is my help to come? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. The Lord will not let your foot be moved. The one who watches over you will not fall asleep. Behold, the one who watches over Israel shall neither sleep nor slumber. It is the Lord who watches over you. The Lord, who is your shade by your right hand, so that the sun shall not strike you by day nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve you from all evil. The Lord shall keep you safe. The Lord shall watch over your going out and your coming in from this time forth and evermore. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. So our reading tonight comes from uh, the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 2, reading from 16 to 26. For the wise, like the fool, will not be long remembered. The days have already come when both have been forgotten. Like the fool, the wise must die too. So I hate life, because the work that is done under the sun was grievous to me. All of this is meaningless, a chasing after the wind. I hated all the things I had to toil for under the sun, because I must leave them to one who comes after me. And who knows whether that person will be wise or foolish. Yet they will have control over all the fruit of my toll, into which I have poured my effort and skill under the sun. This too is meaningless. So my heart began to despair over my toilsome labour under the sun. For a person may labour with wisdom, knowledge, skill, and then must leave all that they own to another who has not toiled for it. This too is meaningless and a great misfortune. What do people get for all the toil and anxious strivings with which they labour under the sun? All their days their work is grief and pain. Even their nights, at night their minds do not rest. This too is meaningless. A person can do nothing better than to eat and drink and find satisfaction in their own toil. This too, I see, is from the hand of God. For without him, who can eat or find enjoyment? To the person who pleases him, God gives wisdom, knowledge and happiness. But to the sinner he gives the task of gathering and storing up wealth to hand it over to the one who pleases God. This too is meaningless as chasing after the wind. And then Matthew thirteen fifty three to 58, a prophet without honour. When Jesus had finished these parables he moved on from there. Coming to his hometown he began to preach and teach the people in the synagogue. They were amazed. Where did this man get his wisdom and these miraculous powers, they asked. Isn't this the carpenter's son? Isn't his mother's name Mary? Aren't his brothers 
James, Joseph, Simon and Judas. Aren't all his sisters with us? Where then did this man get all these things? And they took offence at him. But Jesus said to them, A prophet is not without honour except in his own town and in his own home. And he did not do many miracles there because of their lack of faith. So a reflection. As we finish the uh, second chapter of Ecclesiastes, we may find ourselves a little wearied by Solomon's approach. Meaningless, meaningless, everything is meaningless. And he's beginning to sound a lot like um, Eeyore from Winnie the Pooh. Eeyore was always negative, or seemed to have that negative outlook. There was never a hint of enthusiasm in his voice. Philip Yancey points out the word meaningless appears 30 times in the book of Ecclesiastes, and it only occurs once more in the Bible. He writes, The issue of bothering the teacher, Solomon, were the same ones that bothered Job and bother all fair-minded people today. The rich get richer, the poor poorer. Evil people prosper as good ones suffer. Tyrants reign, disasters happen, disease spread. Everyone dies, everyone turns to dust. Life is unfair. Nothing makes sense. The whole world seems off balance and twisted. You work hard and somebody else gets all the credit. You struggle to be good and bad people trample on you. You accumulate money and it goes to spoilt heirs. You seek pleasure and it turns sour. Death, the ever-present stalker spectre, contradicts any notion that we were born to be happy. That's from his book, The Bible Jesus. Sorry, The Bible Jesus Read. Ecclesiastes is Solomon's attempt to find meaning in life. And so far, Solomon has told us our work is an exercise in futility. Wisdom doesn't add up to satisfaction. Pleasures don't, um, do not please. And even being wise doesn't bring significance and satisfaction. It may even make us more aware of the lack thereof. You work hard all your life to amass your treasures and then it is left to someone else. And to make matters worse, Solomon says, the people who get your stuff will not appreciate it because they didn't work for it. In fact, many of them will feel entitled to what you have earned. They will not value it as you did and they could very well squander it. We live in a time where many people derive their identity and value from the work they do. The first question most people ask you when they meet you is, what do you do or what did you do if you're retired? And as a result, we look to our jobs for significance, for security, and hopefully to find fulfilment and happiness, if not from the job itself, from the money or the context that we make through the job. Unfortunately, as we've seen recently, we can lose a job due to circumstances beyond our control. It could be another pandemic. It could be a new owner. It could be because of an accusation of another person or an honest mistake on the job. The job, which was so much part of identity, can be lost. And then what do we have? If we put our hope in these things, we'll be on very fragile ground. The last thing he says is meaningless is the very last verse of our, test, our text. But if the sinner becomes wealthy, God takes the wealth away and gives it to those who please him. This too is meaningless, like chasing the wind. Solomon is saying, in the end, believers will inherit everything. So from the perspective of life under the sun, this too makes it all too futile, meaningless and a waste of time. But Solomon also points us in the direction of joy and satisfaction in life. Verses 24 to 26 are interpreted in different ways. Some people say Solomon is saying, since you're going to leave it all behind, just grab it all with gusto now. And the phrase carpe diem comes to mind. It's live for the moment. The argument is, if all we have is this, make the best of it. Don't worry about other people and eternal consequences. But just have a good time. But I don't believe that's what Solomon is saying at all. I think what Solomon is saying is, yeah, enjoy food and drink. Find satisfaction in your job and a life that can only happen as we live in fellowship with God. Jesus himself said, I've come to bring them life and life in abundance. Solomon understood that eating, drinking and finding satisfaction in life were all good things, 
but they're not the ultimate things. And when we look for these things to find ultimate meaning and purpose, we're going to be left empty. And even these good things will seem hollow. We must not make these things God has given us into God's. They will only disappoint us. And the same is true with our job. It is good to enjoy what we do. However, the real satisfaction for our job comes from not working um, as we are, but working as if we are servants of the Lord. When all said and done, that's all that matters. That the Lord will one day say to us, well done, good and faithful servant. So we listen now to our song. Oops, which doesn't want to play. I will... Why is that not working? No, nope, my... We'll come back to the song because it doesn't want to play. Let's, we'll continue with prayer. Oh, it's going to play now. <clears throat> Philippians 2, 8 and 9. Praise to you, O Christ, King of eternal glory. Christ humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even death on the cross. 
Therefore God was highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name. Praise to you, O Christ, King of eternal glory. And our New Testament song for Tuesday, 1 John 4, 7-11. Dear friends, let us love one another, for love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, because God is love. This is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only Son into the world that we might live through him. This is love. Not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. Dear friends, since God so loved us, we ought to love one another. So let us bring our prayers to God. The Lord Almighty grant us a quiet night and a perfect end. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. So we come before you now, Lord lifting up our friends and relatives who are facing serious uh, illnesses and emotional crises and the situations and the places and the people on our hearts at this time. We pray for a peaceful resolution to the situation between the occupied Palestinian territory and Israel, for Ukraine and Russia, South Sudan, Yemen, Afghanistan and other zones of conflict and violence and humanitarian disasters in our world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we pray for those who have asked for our prayer at this time. For Chris Willis, our administrator and office manager at the East Midlands Synod office, following her surgery. For Elaine Dre, the secretary of her former ERM in URC, in her pain and anxiety as she waits for surgery. For June Pevy, for Graham Garbell, for his continued recovery after surgery. For the Reverend Caroline Andrews, for Roger Allen and the Reverend Ruth Allen in her care and concern of him. With Alison for her parents, the Reverend Brian Russell and Dorothy Russell. For Barbara Turner from Holly Moorside URC as she awaits surgery. For the Reverend Helen Wakefield Carr in her ongoing cancer treatment. For the Reverend Liz Adams. For the Reverend Hamish Temple for recovery from surgery. For Jean Schenk and for the Reverend Brian Schenk in his care and concern of her. For the Reverend Graham and Vera Maskery. For Father Andy Moynier's Paris priest. With Uncle Ter for her friend Baye. With the Reverend Claire and the Reverend Brian Davison for Susie their daughter for Cheryl and for Prince and the family in their ongoing care of her. With Andy for Mike, his dad, and for Liz and Ruth in their ongoing care of him. For John and for Irene as she continues to look after him. For Margaret Davis, the secretary of our former URC Rose Hill, who is very poorly. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. And we pray for those who grieve especially for Alison's sister Caroline on the death of Caroline's husband Steve, also with Alison's husband Paul and his dad Roy and all the family on the death of Paul's mum Pat. For those who grieve for, the, for Don Buxton, especially the Reverend Maureen Buxton. For all those who grieve for Bishop Alan Wilson, especially his wife Lucy and the family. And for all who grieve the passing of loved ones. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God is ultimate source of comfort, healing and strength. Lord, may your loving presence surround all who are mentioned and those known to us, providing solace in a time of distress. Grant them courage to face their challenges and the resilience to overcome adversity. And may your healing touch be upon those suffering physically, bringing restoration and renewal. For those grappling with emotional turmoil, we ask your peace that surpasses understanding and a sense of hope that brightens even the darkest moments, so that they may feel your love, experience your feet, peace, and find comfort in the knowledge that they are not alone. We pray for the unity of the church in the witness and proclamation of the gospel. Especially tonight, we pray for the United Reformed Churches and their ecumenical partners in Leicestershire. Rejoicing in God here among us, we pray as our Saviour taught us to pray. Our Father in heaven, Hallowed be your name, 
your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from a time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. In peace we will lie down to sleep. For you alone, Lord, make us dwell in safety. Abide with us, Lord Jesus, for the night is at hand and the day has now passed. As the night watch looks for the morning, so we look to you, O Christ. May the Lord bless us and watch over us. May the Lord make his face to shine upon us and be gracious to us. May the Lord look kindly on us and give us peace. Amen. So good night and God bless.